Well, in the Eurozone, there are some, have been some well-performing economies like Germany or Finland or Austria on the one hand. On the other hand, some problem countries like Greece, uh, Portugal, Italy and Spain, which shows that Euro cannot be blamed uh, for this differentiation. Euro has, might have contributed to the problems in some countries because of inflows of cheap money and one credit spreads have been so suppressed and there was a very little difference between credit spreads uh, of German bonds and Greek bonds. It's a big debate, but much points out that some ECB's policies have contributed to that. But fundamentally, you see that difference in economic performance outside Euro too. On the one hand, you see Sweden, which has been performing quite well after 2008. On the other hand, I am sorry to say, Britain has been a laggard. <laughs> So it's up to the national policies one has to look at to discover the deeper roots of the problems and is it up to national policies uh, to fix it. Russell cannot fix problems especially of larger countries. I think there have been two kinds of problems both in the Eurozone and outside the Eurozone. The first problem were boom-bust episodes, which have happened in uh, Greece, in, uh, in Spain, and in Ireland. And uh, there are many policies which have contributed to these problems. For example, subsidizing uh, mortgage credit, or the lack of any effective constraints on fiscal policies. And generally, the cheap money which was flying to the countries uh, usually tends to weaken the policy makers' incentives to, to reform. But, and the second problem, as I just alluded, was delaying reforms and financing bad policies. Uh, for example, a systematically increased uh, spending or tolerating, accumulating microeconomic distortions which reduce competition. And as I said, there, are some, there have been some countries in the Eurozone which were plagued by these problems, but you, if you look outside the Eurozone, you see also boom and bust episodes uh, like in the United States or in Britain. <laughs> I think where if you enter a hard pack area like the Eurozone, you have to have a very flexible economy because you cannot devalue your currency. So you have to rely on uh, what is called internal devaluation. And the problem with some countries like Greece or Spain or Portugal was that they entered the euro with very rigid labor market regulation. And only because of the crisis, they launched uh, reforms, hopefully, they would be more flexible in the future, but the need for more flexible markets also, uh, it's true, relevant in the case of non-Eurozone countries. In Poland, we need some more labor market flexibility too. I think it is needed because I don't see any good substitute for increased uh, fiscal discipline in their respective countries. And if you abolish non-bailout clause, then uh, it's very difficult to reestablish or introduce fiscal discipline. What is interesting is that in the US, there is de facto non-bailout clause between the federal government and the states. In the Eurozone, there was an official non-bailout clause which was violated. I know it's difficult, but I think it should be restored. <laughs>